I'm gonna show a couple of tips now for how to install baseboard. If you're using wood, it's a quality product, it's gonna see something like this, three quarter inch thick. You need to know how to use your tools properly when you're working with stuff like this, or you're gonna end up with a really bad looking job. When you buy economy trim, the really thin stuff, colonial, lots of molding, you can basically cut that square, stick it in a corner, put in a caulking line, and paint and walk away. But when you're working with stuff like this, you really got two choices. You're gonna to have to either miter the corner, which is putting the 45 degree angles on, or you're gonna to have to pull out the coping saw and trace your line and cut it and then fit it over top of the, the design on the wood. Uh, I like to miter my corners and then still rely on some caulking. But I like to glue my wood corners together. Again, expansion and contraction. So I'm gonna show you a couple tips when you're working with thick wood, because wood has a tendency to not be straight. So. What I do, I take some scrap, throw it on the wall. Right away, that's what I'm building on. Whenever I'm working with wood like this, I want it the same thickness off the floor because the material's available. Nice and easy. Uh, I'm gonna put the flooring down. I'm also gonna have a base shoe that goes on so I don't have to worry about the gap. And that gap is really convenient for me. Uh, it has a little bit of come and go with the bend in the wood. It's still gonna look amazing. Keeps your base wood. If you buy a six inch trim, you don't want to put in your floors and only have five inches left. So install it off the ground when you get started. Gives you room for your floor to expand and contract underneath that trim. And then you're not restricting, you know, the, the flooring from causing buckling. So I'm gonna go take a measurement for the whole length of the wall right now. There we go. This wall is 118 and a quarter. I'm gonna cut it at 118 and an eighth because no room is ever square, no corner is ever wonderful, and where I measure is beneath with a mud joint on that wall. So if I cut from drywall to drywall, it's gonna to be too long, and I'm gonna to have to be jamming it in. Okay, so we're gonna adjust our saw just to carry the weight of that wood. We've got 118 and a quarter was our actual measurement. I'm gonna be cutting the board down to 3 sixteenths smaller than that to account for the mud that's built up in the corner and that'll also give me the opportunity to uh, make any adjustments that are necessary on the floor when I'm installing the corners. You'll be gonna see when I put these all together, cutting it small has an advantage. Okay. Now, I'm using a 10 inch compound miter saw. Not tall enough for me to cut this way because my trim is actually higher than from the tip of the blade up to this arbor here. So I have to cut it on an angle. So my saw has an easy adjustment. Make sure your gate's out of the way, your saw can pass freely. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it right down here to the end, keep it flush. So I already know that when my saw passes through the wood, it's gonna go into the hole in the saw. So I line my wood up right off the edge here, okay? And this is a great tip for people who are learning this for the first time. You'll see that there's a little bit of meat left, but now you know exactly where that blade's gonna cut. So we're gonna pull it forward just a little bit. Perfect. So once you're comfortable with your saw and where that blade's gonna go to, I know I'm going 1 8 past the, that line. I can just set it up. right on the edge, perfect. Ready to install. So when you're putting this in, be careful. At this point, your walls are usually primed and ready for paint. You don't wanna be putting holes everywhere. Okay, so here we go. Like I said, it's a little snug, even though I took 3 16 off. It's amazing how much mud builds up in those corners. There we go. So now you're set off the ground. Great for expansion and traction of the flooring. Um, when you're installing your outside corner now, take that little block, spin it around, takes, picks up both corners, okay? Always measure and check things first. That is beautiful. Now, you can see that gap looks pretty good. But if I was putting a nail and put pressure, it's gonna open up the hole. So what I can do is I can put a shim in behind that, 
and then I can manipulate these baseboards just enough. If I want to have a little bit more manipulation, cut and break the shim, open up the gap, put the thick side down underneath, and that can give you even more ability to manipulate it. Now when I put that nail, it's not going to move, all right? Best part about that is, now you can open up this board. Again, use some glue on the corners. Okay, not too much, just enough to make contact. Get that shim where you want it. Find that happy place again. Perfect. Trim all that out of the way. So that's a process you're gonna to need to use almost every corner, because every corner has the same phenomenon. You're gonna have two pieces of drywall meeting. If you build a room perfectly square, good for you, but then as soon as you put mud on the wall, you wreck that. So you're always gonna have this concave action in the corners. So having shims handy to nail your corners when you're using big fat trim like this will help guarantee your joints are always pretty. Glue them first because you can't get in there to nail them together. And then once you've attached this side using the same technique with the shim, all you do is just fill in the gaps and keep the baseboard straight. Cock it and you're good to go. So a little tip with your pneumatic nailer. Don't press too hard. It's going to make a dent when the nail goes through. But if you press too hard, even the guide here is going to put a hole in the wood. End up filling two holes instead of one. Just another quick tip when you're putting your baseboards on. Uh, I always like to do it when I've primed the wall before I've painted because I want to be able to caulk this joint and then I want my paint to be covering the caulking. First with the wall and then cut clean with the finished paint. When you're nailing, when you have drywall surface, you can actually see your framework because you're going to have spots on the wall where the mud is over the screws, especially beside the electrical boxes. You know where your wood is. So you just line up and you're 16 on centers and it pulls nice and tight. Again, when you get to the corner, feel free to nail that in. You manipulate the other side to close the gap the way you need to when you join that piece of wood in. There you go. So if you enjoyed this video and you like these tips and tricks to help make your life easier, then subscribe to the channel and by all means hit the like button. We like to know what you like, so hit the button. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos by all means or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.